All right, welcome into another edition of Catching Up with Tommy Mack here on 1010XL's podcast platform at 1010XL.com. Of course, on the 1010XL app, and uh, we are also live on Facebook, 1010's page, my own page, and we share it everywhere. Go to the YouTube channel for 1010XL. Uh, You'll see pretty much every bit of content that you can handle, all from 1010XL here in the podcast studios or even in the radio uh, studio where they're uh, they're filming. And you, you know, they're live streaming on YouTube. Great content here. Uh, great to be on 1010XL. Brought to you by Team Tommy Mack, Chris Lucero's Bail Bonds, J Dog Junk Removal and Hauling, uh, Azar Sausage. Oh, we had it this week. Phenom- you know what I did with the Azar Sausage this week, if I may? First of all, I accidentally burnt them. Just a couple of them, right? But you, you kind of like it when they're a little crispy like that. I saved them in time. Then I cut them lengthwise and then. Uh, into little pieces, and I took those, uh, what are those, uh, Martin's potato bread slider sandwich rolls, and then I put a little mustard, and then put like three of them down, and then smushed them together. Now, granted, this was just for me <laughs> and my boy Robbie. What else do you need? Nothing. We didn't have any vegetables or nothing, but whatever. It was fantastic. Get your Azar sausage out there. Win Dixie, especially Meat Fifty Five. We had a great event. Get some of the best meat. Go like the Facebook page, Meat Fifty Five, and you figure out how to get the best meat out there. Carbon Man Flooring, uh, LVP baby, LVP. You know it. You know where to get it at Carpet Man Flooring and Truck Accident. A law firm, all they do is truck accidents. So that's why you go to them and uh, they get the job done. Of course, it's week two in the National Football League. We're talking Jags. It's like a playoff game here. It is. It's, it, it brings back memories to 2018 when the New England Patriots came to town in week two. And uh, obviously uh, this one with us winning the first one on the road with the Chiefs losing their opener to the Detroit Lions on a Thursday night. This makes this game absolutely huge. Now, the national media is going to talk about the Jets in Dallas. Why? Because the biggest story in the National Football League is Aaron Rodgers tearing his Achilles on the, I shouldn't even giggle because it's so awful, but on the fourth play of the game, just awful, awful, awful. Of course, they found a way to win. My boy, Brant Boyer's team, special teams unit, getting it done. Um, So that's why they're talking about, well, what are they going to do? You know, everyone's rallying around Zach Wilson under their breath. They're sitting there going, we are in a big trouble unless the kid can figure it out. They go to Dallas. Dallas just kicked the living crap out of the Giants on national TV. 40 to nothing was brutal. And yeah, that's why they're talking about that game. But from a true football perspective, from a true two heavyweights going at it, and the Jags are one of them. Uh, this game here in Jacksonville is the number one game in the entire National Football League. And I know I'm biased, but at least in my opinion. Let's welcome in Grammage to the show. How you doing, Grammage? What's up? Happy Friday, sir. Happy Friday to you. Dad bods tonight. Yes, sir. Iggy's in Fruit Cove. Come Hell on yeah. out. We're going to be rocking. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's, uh, it's tough to complain when you got a football weekend ahead of my Florida Gators at home yep. facing the Tennessee Volunteers in the following day, uh, having the best game in the National Football League this yep. week. Inarguably, like you just said, it is the Jaguars Chiefs here at 1 p.m. I don't know how in the world that's a 1 p.m. game. Actually, yes, True. I do. It's because the Chiefs have about 7,000 night games. Yeah, they um, do. They're, well, it they're, should be a 4 o'clock. They're the champ. It? it should. It should be 425. It's, it's it's but if you look at, not, I but. saw a little clip on, I think it was on Twitter. I get a lot of my stuff from Twitter, but uh, they had a map of who's going to be watching the Chiefs and the Jags, and it's two thirds of the country. Yeah, will be watching that game, or it'll be on their local channel. So uh, it's a huge game. I mean, look again. I was saying before the show, as we were just on Facebook, Chiefs, they got a lot to prove. They've got a lot to prove. I, look, I'm not again. I know what the the stats say. You go one and two. You don't go to the playoffs or what I even if they go one with two I'm I'm really not concerned about the Chiefs I'm keeping this you got to keep it in it, look it's a very exciting game and and deservedly so all across the board but I'm keeping it in perspective too like Doug said it's a benchmark game it is for week two of the season doesn't mean what happens down the road we know that we, what did we learn last year right we started off pretty damn good Remember when we beat the Chargers the way we beat them? We're like, hey, we're eh. until we played Philly, we were two and one, right? We go up to Philly and Philly smacks us in the mouth, and then we're like, oh no, this is 
something's wrong, something's amiss, something's not right. Then they go on the slide, and then we're like, oh, man, this isn't going to happen. Lose to the Texans. Losing to the, the Texans. One, one score games, but yeah. just bad ways yeah. of losing. And then what happened? They found a way. They clicked. So like Doug says, look, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. However, however, here, here, here's the from the risk to the reward, right? You get your ass beat. People are going to be like, yeah, they're, they're, they're all right, but they're – they're not ready for the big time yet. You keep it close and lose, they'll say, well, you know, they kept it pretty close last year as well. They're not totally, they look good, they're better, but they're not here. That You beat them, that's a statement game. It goes across the country, across the world. The Jacksonville Jaguars upended the Super Bowl champs in week two of the National Football League. That'll be big news. That'll be the biggest news of the week, unless some other craziness happens, but it will. So that's the biggest thing here, right? And and I know what we all want. We want a victory. And I know what we'll all think. Remember we, when we beat the Patriots? You remember when we beat them in week two? Hell yeah. What did Hell we yeah, think? <laughs> what did we think? Oh, I thought Here it was. we go. Here we go. Here, you- guess what happened? You could not tell me that team wasn't going to the Super Bowl no, after that game. You right. could not so convince that's, me. So li- we're going to live in the moment, of course. We got to. That's what sports are, right? You live in the moment. You live in the game. It's a humongous game. It's going to feel like a playoff game. The stadium's going to be rocking. Everywhere's going to be rocking. The whole city's going to be watching our Jacksonville Jaguars take on the Super Bowl champs, who, by the way, we went toe-to-toe with twice. Didn't come up on the winning end, but twice went toe-to-toe, and especially in the playoff game where we had a chance. But this is an opportunity for our Jags to be like, take a look down here because we just beat the Chiefs and we're 2-0 and and we're coming off. By the way, because you know what the, the talk's going to be? They're going to they're gonna bring in last year. They're going to be like, hey, in the last 15 games, Jags are whatever right, they right, are, right, like right, 11 right. and yep. four or yep, whatever. Yep, yep. They will if you win this game, which is Trevor great. Lawrence has thrown this many touchdowns right. and this many INTs. Right. In, the la- right. yeah. in the last, 100%. going back to last year, they love doing that, the media, natural media, to reinforce their story. Well, going back into last year, Trevor's yep, only yep, thrown, yep, right? Yep. So we're going to see that. Uh, can't have turnovers. That That's a big one. I don't care how they come. Can't have fumbles. Can't have boneheaded plays. No disrespect to Tank. He didn't know what was going on, but can't have those kind of plays. No picks. No bad throws, you know, where it, you know, it dings off our guy into the hands of their guys. Uh, I, you can't have any of that. You can't have a turnover. you got to have a turnover-free game uh, this week. I got some other keys as well. Chris Jones is back. Travis Kelsey's back. Okay, you can say what you want. He's hurt. He's not going to be ready. He's going to be out. Of, listen, all you need from Chris Jones is about 30 plays. And if he's disruptive in half of them, it could be a big problem. You know what I mean? And if I'm Chris Jones, no disrespect. But you know where I'm working? I'm working Barch and Fortner. I'm going to work Scherf a little, but Scherf will give me a taste of my own medicine. I'm going to go see what I can do against these other guys who struggled last week. Our offensive line struggled against a pretty good defensive front. I'm not going to take anything away from the Colts. DeForest Buckner's a stud player, but Chris Jones is even better than DeForest Buckner and can really wreak havoc. So can their other guys. Hannah's another guy. He can play. Their linebackers can play. They're they're a good, they're not a they're kind of a bend, don't break defense, but that that bend or that when they when they stiffen up can hurt you. Remember, the last time Chris Jones was on this stadium, we know what happened. Bad things happen. Can't let any of that happen. Can't let him control the game. Because if you can control him, you know what you can do on this defense, the Chiefs defense? You can pound the rock, and you can get ETN going big time. I'm still, look, I still want to see Tank do more. He redeemed himself on the touchdown. I'll be honest with you. I'm not a big fan of the rugby touchdown. I it, it, And I know I'm a defensive player because I'm biased, but you know what? It's like, Forward progression, when does it stop? It doesn't ever seem to stop in those types of things. You know what I mean? I mean, I think they pushed him in from the six. He was down at like the eight, but whatever. Hey, he redeemed himself. That. He kept churning. He kept going. I'm not taking anything away from the young man. But we need more out of him. We need more out of the offensive line, and we need more out of our backs. Now, ETN, uh, 26-yarder was great. I think he finished with 77 yards overall. Uh, he had a decent yards per carry. 4.2, 4.3. He always does, man. He does. But without that 26, it's not as great. 
You're right. Keep that in mind. But he still made the play, so it still counts. Don't get me wrong. But we need a big day out of Travis Etienne, in my opinion. We're going to need a big day out of it. We're going to need – look, Trevor's going to have a big day. He's going to have a great day. He, 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 he's off to a good start. He made some dime throws last week that were incredible. No doubt about it. Uh, the one to Ridley, which everyone thought was going to be picked in between the two, was unbelievable. The throw to Zay Jones was unbelievable. He's got to be – Better on a couple others, although he did throw for 75% completion percentage last week. But I think the ETN train has got to get going. Nothing worse when you can't stop the run and their score in points. On the defensive side of the ball, Gramich, double Kelsey. Let everyone else beat you. Forget this, I'm going to jam him. You're not going to jam him. You know why you're not going to jam him? Because the minute you stop jamming him, guess what he does? He takes a step back off the line of scrimmage. Now you can't jam him because he's got space. And if he's got a little bit of space, he's got enough shake to make sure you may you may get one hand on him, but you ain't stopping his route when you got to do that. You know, this whole thinking of, well, you know, uh, Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker on their way to the quarterback. You give him a hit. No, no, no. They need to focus on getting to the quarterback. Forget trying to hit Kelsey. You Just can't, double his ass. You can't say that, and then in the third quarter, it'd be like, well, where's Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker? Yeah, why right, aren't they, right. why aren't They're they worried making... about chipping right. freaking Kelsey. You can't have no. both of those no, no, things. No, 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 no. I agree with you no. 100%. Uh, I'm doubling, and I, you can't, I wouldn't double them every time. I keep them guessing, but I'm doubling them. We learned that last year, even with pressure on Mahomes. He finds a way out. Kelsey's open. If he's one-on-one, he's open. He's that good. He really and, is that good. I mean, look, I don't know how else to put it, but if you're not going to put another guy on him, two guys, at certain times, he's going to eat you up like he did last year, and that's going to be a tough game. And, by the way, if you do so, if, you, if you're if you going to double Kelsey, that means you're that means what? You're going to have a linebacker initially, and you're going to have a, you're gonna have maybe safety, a safety help over the top, yeah, most yeah, likely, yeah, right? Yeah. Or a nickel and safety. You know, right. whatever. you got to mix it up a Somebody little. Somebody on the inside. Correct. So, typically in a normal offense, and like if Tyreek Hill were still on the Chiefs or something like that, that would be the answer yep. for the Chiefs offensively is, all right, let's look outside and let's test these corners. Yep. I I really like my chances of Darius Williams and Tyson Campbell on yep. the Noah Grays of the world and, Scan- and the Kadarius Tony. Scanley's good. Scanley King makes some plays. But they're fine he's players, it. but... Are no. we worried they're going to have 10 catches for no. 150 Not worried on about us? Tony. Not worried about more. No. But I'm, I'm, wor- I'm a little worried about Scantling because he, he'll make a play or two, which could hurt you. Right. But, but I'm more worried about Kelsey. I, I'm not worried that any of those guys would be the reason the Jaguars lose the football game. Agreed. Travis Kelsey will 100% be a reason the Jaguars lose a football Without game a doubt. if you let him cook. If you let him cook. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you, you're, I think you're exactly right. Give me... Give me Devin Lloyd and Rayshon Jenkins or something yeah, like that. Or on Cisco, you right. know, and whatever. Trust, trust my outside corners. Yeah. I, I, I drafted Tyson Campbell super high, yep. and I paid Darius Williams good money for a reason. Yep. And they're good football players. Yeah. Trust them. I agree. I agree. And look, you know, you know, it's funny with Mahomes. He can kill you anyway. Of course. So of pick course. your poison. I, I'm still trying to pressure him. And the reason why I'm trying to pressure him is it just speeds things up. Now, you let him out the side gate. He can hurt you really bad, right? So the the key is for Mahomes is that that front pressure, not necessarily the outside guys. Because what he's great at, a lot of quarterbacks are, they feel that outside pressure and nobody up front's coming. What do they do? They step up, they step out. And with him, he'll step out and go. And he's as dangerous, if not more, on the run, especially to his throwing side. He'll throw it across the whole damn field yep. and, and make the throw no problem. I was going to say it. A lot of QBs, <laughs> excuse me, Anthony Richardson type QBs that yeah. we just faced. Once they do make that step up, yep. it's relatively safe to assume they're going to run the ball at that point. Yep. With Mahomes, man, yep. those DBs better still. You better not take nope. any half step forward or right. hesitation because nope. he will unleash that ball in your he ass will. 50 yards down the field. Wait for it, tell him to cross the line before 100%. you come off your coverage. And then the D-line's just the pursuit's got to be just and, relentless. And to me, if I'm Mike Caldwell, yep. I'm telling my defense, I'm telling my DBs at least, yep. and my linebackers that are going to have some responsibilities and coverage, yep. look, if Mahomes gets two or three extra yards on the ground yep. and on any given play, yep. Just get that's, a hit on him. That's okay. Yeah. 
but don't let him step up, make you hesitate, and then right. get it over well, your th- head. Think about the, the playoff game. And again, that was then. This is now. It's different, right? But think about what, what killed us. Uh, Kelsey killed us on the 98-play drive with Chad Head. 100%. Yep. Right? That, that a- absolutely killed us. Uh, and then it was Mahomes scrambling. Yeah. I mean, that one out of the pocket where we, we thought, wait, well, I thought his ankle was toast. Like, he outran everybody. I remember it was like a 25-yard, right? We're like, oh, man, that killed us. But those things cannot happen. I'm, I'm going to, you know, and I'm not calling them out. This isn't a call out. But it, it it's a call out in a good way. Uh, Josh Allen, this is your time to dominate. You know Jawan Taylor. You know you can beat him. And Jawan Taylor's a fine player. He's He's fine. I'm not saying he's not a good player. He is. But you've gone against him a lot. You know the they both know the ins and outs. You know what works. You you know you can beat him. You've got to beat him. You've got to dominate. Look, last week, I'll tell you one thing. Look, he got three sacks. That's what it is on, on the on the sheet. It's three. Two of them, actually all three of them, but two of them were out hustle. They were just hustling plays. He was motor is phenomenal. He he don't stop. Josh, I mean, he's got the conditioning of a young man that can fly around and make things. He was disruptive last week. He was hustling last week. I, I want to see more of that. I want to see him beat the ass of Jawan Taylor in this game when they match up. And look, Jawan's no slouch, so it's not an easy task. But Josh Allen, you want to be considered one of the top pass rushers, edge rushers, outside backers in the game. You got to dominate on Sunday. You said it's personal. Good. Make it even more personal. You want to dominate Jawan Taylor. And you have the opportunity to do so. And I think that's a big part. Now, what else goes in with that? Foley. Fadakasi, who did play very well last week. Those two together on the same side. Got to make sure that Jawan Taylor has a long ass day. I think that's one of the keys to the game. Um, I totally agree. And also, to keep going on that, how much – you watched a, a good amount of, if not all, of the uh, Chiefs-Lions game, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you know how it was a thing on Twitter of Jawan that everybody kind of started realizing what – Yeah. Oh, <laughs> kick, kick, yeah. yeah. Um, and now they're looking at it. The NFL right. is looking at it. Yep. Uh, yep. You tell me as a former defensive player, because I felt this way watching it, um, I felt – like, I felt this way even more so than when he was here. With how far back he lines up, yep. is it not a pretty clear tell if it's a runner pass? Um, to me, it felt like yeah, yeah, to me, it felt point. like he only lined up that way when they were throwing the ball. Yeah. He lines up deeper than he did with us, it Correct. seemed. It was even more, more obvious. More so, more obvious. Yeah. And it wasn't quite as obvious when he was here, so I never felt like it was... I never felt like just looking at Jawan was a clear tell if we were running or throwing the ball. I never felt like his alignment was a problem, but he would... It was the jump. The jump was the problem. Right. It was never how he lined, but now it's like the line and the jump. Dude, he's like a whole head back yeah. from everybody well, else. They're going to they're gonna make him move up, I think. Look, I think, I think look, if, he, if he's right on the snap count, I got no problem. You can time that up every single time, good for you. When the ball doesn't move and you don't call a false start, that's when the problem comes in. And there were times on that game against the Lions where he did not. Like the ball moved, uh, or the ball didn't move before him. And it was clear, and they don't call the penalty. So I think they're not going to allow that to happen. And again, back to Josh Allen. I'm in the ref's ear all game long if he's pulling at Yes. You know? Hey, man, this guy's jumping. Can you not see? Why is he lined up so far back? Yo, Jawan, why are you lined up? You're afraid I'm going to beat you on the outside. Like, you've got to get, get into his him. head, yeah. Get into his head. Get into the ref's and head. If, Make it happen. Also, if I'm Josh Allen, you know, I, I know normally you're always taught, watch the ball, watch the ball, watch the ball. Don't listen yeah. to snap count, no, nothing right. else. But watch knowing, him. <laughs> knowing this is a thing, watch his ass. Watch him, yeah. No, you're right. You're I right. I mean, clear, right. clearly... Clearly, based on what we see, if you just go off of Jawan Taylor, yep. you'll get the best jump every play if you just watch him every no time. No doubt. No doubt. So yeah. do that. Yep. You and gotta be on it. And also, like I said, like the way he lines up in the pa- I'm telling you, yep. it it felt like we'll every single time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way he lined up 
when he lined up far back like that, they threw the ball every single time he did. Well, that. they're gonna listen that, and, and now the league's on notice. Uh, why did I think why a was national TV and b I think he's even further back than he was. I, I don't do remember his alignment I being that far back, but now it is. So we'll see if they do anything about it. Let's take around take a quick look around the National Football League. Of course, the Eagles taking down the Vikings last night. Vikings what ran it like nine times. Eagles ran it all over the place and got the job done. Great game uh, for them to find a way to win. Of course, in the AFC South, Indy at Houston. I know a barn burner, no doubt about that. The AR versus uh, uh, Stroud. Um, I think Indy's going to win that one. I got a feeling. Yeah, I like Indy's front seven. Their defense Indy's is good. Man. Team they got a good Houston. defense. They got a pretty good defense overall. Uh, and then the uh, the Chargers are at Tennessee. Tennessee lost a uh, nail biter last week in New Orleans. Can they win at home? Tannehill did not play well. Uh, Chargers, you know, I don't Man, know. Could you imagine if the Jaguars take care of business here and then the Chargers beat the Titans? Yeah, and you got you got a two a two game lead. Yeah, on the main team you're expecting to compete. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, you, you said this in absolutely. the offseason, and I totally agree with you. Vrabel is too good of a coach. The Titans are not going to lay down easily. No. Nope. But man, any week you can pick up a game on them. Yeah, I mean, think about it. like that. Be absolutely, that would absolutely. be really nice if yeah. all of a sudden it's Jags are you know three and zero, oh, three and one, four, yeah. something like that, and the Titans you know you slip. Not, so. You're not concerned about Indy and Houston. You shouldn't. No. I mean, you got no. you obviously got to beat them when you play them. You know, so you got to be concerned that day. But you're not really concerned. But in you're, December, they're not going to be a game. You're not worried about that. But yeah. Tennessee, you still got to keep your eye on, and 100%. it's still early. I mean, it's only week one or now week two. So that was a big loss uh, to the Saints, though. Yeah, well, by close, sixteen, fifteen, I think it was. I'm saying it was like it, like yeah. an important loss. Yeah, no, yeah, I, like agreed. Monumental. agreed. No doubt, no doubt about it. Um, but look. For the Jags, this is the first game of the Big Five, and I'm I've, I've already said that, right? You got uh, Baltimore, uh, uh, Baltimore, the 49ers, Cincy, Buffalo, and the Chiefs, right? So this is a big one. This is a look. Like I said, I expect you to do well against these other teams. Now let's see how you compare. And again, you got to keep it in somewhat perspective because it's week two. Now if they get their ass blown out. We're going to come out here and, and bitch and fuss and piss about the whole team. You know what I mean? But I don't expect that to happen. I think it's going to be a tight game. I got the Jags winning 28-27. Uh, look, Agnew's got to have another big day. Special team's going to have to make a play. And and this is about – it is about uh, field position. Uh, keep in mind, no Tyree kill. They're not flipping field position like they used to be able to. We can with Agnew. We can with our punter, Logan Cook, as well, who can blast it. So we do have to have a great outing by special teams. Um, do we have to score on special teams? Man, that would be nice. Uh, I'm calling, look, a key to winning, you may have to score on special teams and or defense. to beat, And that puts a dagger in. And I think Agnew's got the opportunity to do it. That guy is absolutely a weapon, and I'm so glad he's on our team. But I think he's going to have to have a big showing uh, come uh, come Sunday. You don't have to attach yourself to this if you don't like, if you would not like to. But I'll just go ahead and attach myself to it. Okay. I'm going to predict this right now. Jamal Agnew is going to return a kick or a punt for a touchdown. Okay. On I like it. I think he can, too. Punt, I think, more than He kick. gave them problems in Kansas City in oh, that yeah. playoff game. Absolutely. He gave them pr- every single kickoff was an yep. issue. He would get yep. it to midfield, like, every time. You know, here's the thing, which is exciting when you have a, a – uh, and I'll go punt return, but when that punt returner makes that first guy miss and you know he can take it to the house, oh, man, do you get excited. Do you get really, really excited. Um, Really quickly. And that's Agnew. 100% agree. I don't know that the Jaguars win the football game on Sun this past Sunday if Jamal Agnew doesn't make that play. Um, I don't think they do. I totally agree yeah. with you. That sparked the whole thing. That was everything. That turned it all around. 100%. Um, if you, obviously, Agnew deserves all the credit in the world, and yep. he's incredible, and, you know, want that guy to be a Jaguar for the rest of his career. Yeah. Um, if you watch that play again, though, because you could tell it was a little bit of a broken play, right? That first yep. bounce, yep. Agnew's probably going to let it, he's probably going to let the ball just keep rolling, but it comes right to him, perfect yep. opportunity. When he takes it up the sideline, yeah. Darius Williams makes a key the block, yep. Dewey Wingard makes a key block, yep. and for them to be able to do it yep. legally yep. and not get any type of block in the back penalty, they were both really good about yep. putting their hands up 
getting in the way, but yeah. not not being stupid, not blindsiding somebody when you know that's a call. Listen, there is nothing for a special teams coach. There's nothing nothing more prettier than the wall being set up, and your guy got past his first guy, and, and now you got a chance to do something. And they were every single person that yep. contributed to building that wall for was smart yep. about. It. And you've got to be smart. No doubt. It's so easy in those types of situations to get a block in the back or a blind no, side you're right. hit or and it's be an easy idiot. to do. Yeah, it's easy to do. And listen. People can complain about it all they want, but yep. that is why this this that's why this uh front office yep. places such an emphasis emphasis oh, on special teams. Absolutely. Remember the chatter the off season? Do we keep Agnew? And I was, I was like, what are you out of your mind? Of course you keep Agnew. Yes. Without a doubt. <laughs> You'd be you never a let moron that sp- not to keep Jamal never, Agnew. Ever let that speed out the door. Before we look a <laughs> little bit more around the National Football League, want to remind you about truck accident law firm. All they do is truck accidents, tractor trailer, buses, big trucks. You get in any kind of issue out there on the streets, any kind of accident, anything. Make sure you check out Truck Accident Law Firm at truckcrashlaw.com. Great people. Uh, they've done all they do is all they do is truck crashes. That's it. They focus on it. They're not going to spend millions on advertising. They're not, but they're going to get the job done and their track record speaks for themselves. All right, here's a question. Will Cincy or Buffalo or both be one and one after this weekend? What do you think there, Grammage? Who do they play? Baltimore's at Cincy. And Buffalo, who do they have? Oh, they've got um Vegas. They got Vegas coming to town. The Raiders. So the Raiders are going to Buffalo. I, I think both of them, I think they both win. The Bills are going to win that game for sure. Yeah. And 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 then Baltimore's going to Cincy. But by the way, I got a gripe with Joe Burrow. And my daughter's going to be really mad at me because she thinks his, you know, he 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 walks on the moon. My my girlfriend shares the same. Oh, they uh, they love him. They yes, love him. Yeah. Hey, he's a good looking guy. Whatever. But here's my problem: guy signs a massive contract, plays like crap. I mean, crap. They all did. They were off. That was his, the worst game of his career, without a doubt. Yeah. And and credit to Browns because they were phenomenal. How about um, Garrett doing the. Do the cross the basketball. Then, I mean, what do you think he's going to do? He's going to fake you. Freaking out. Allen Iverson before the ball. I mean, what am I else? Yeah. Doing? Man, that was and do it over the center. That oh dude. man, just. But credit credit the Browns for they came to play and they've got a team now. They and do. If they're, and if Deshaun Watson turns out to be the old Deshaun Watson on the field, uh, look out. They've got they've got some talent and their defense is. Uh, it's pretty darn good. But anyway, so Burrow's up there. Everyone's laughing, joking around, got his hair cut, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, a, and the reporter says something to him like, uh, uh, what made you go get a haircut, Joe? And he's like, a game like I just had or something. And they all, hi, laughing, blah, blah. And I'm just sitting there going, I, I would like smash my glasses in my hands if I were there. I'd be like, you just played like crap. You're up here being all cute. You just pay, got paid all that money. And try to be cute, and shame on those 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 reporters for not hammering them. Maybe they did. I don't know. But that part, I was like, "What is this? Some love fest?" It wasn't softballs they were throwing. They were throwing cupcakes. You could peel off the wrapper and eat them. I couldn't believe it. I was like, "Come on, man!" Think about Trevor after like the Broncos game last year, like joking around and seeing right. like, "Shut the hell yeah. up!" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He'd have got him. And you know what? He's always and and Joe's fine. He's fine. I'm sure. Whatever. He'll bounce back though. I think they're gonna bounce back. Oh yeah, there's no way since he's going on too. I I don't think I, you you too. Remember they too lost many, that too much like, weaponry. Remember they lost that like soul crushing game to the Steelers week one yeah. last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like the double overtime crazy yeah. game right out. Yeah. And everybody was freaking. out. Oh my god, the Bengals lost. Yep. Blah, blah, blah. AFC North is back. Blah, blah, blah. No, no. And then and again, again for the for any fans out there, you don't want to go zero and two, and you don't want your team getting the crap kicked out of them. But it's a long season. And anything can happen. That's why Doug said it's not how you start, it's how you finish. It's how you finish. It it is. Listen, you think Doug Peterson doesn't want to win that game as much as anybody? Of course. Of course he does. And Sandy Reid? Totally. But Doug. Mentor? But Doug gets it. Man, Doug yeah. knows 17 weeks is a well, lot. Well, he, he don't want to put it on the players. That's how he's smart about it. He's like, look, I'm, it's, it's another game. It's a big game. No doubt about it. It's a huge game. But it is one of 17 games that we have to win. So take all the hoopla out. Let the fans have the hoopla. That's what they deserve. And then you do deserve it, fans, any fans, but our fans especially, our Jaguar fans. Let them be engulfed in all that hype, all that hoopla, all that we got the Chiefs coming to town, the Super Bowls. Let them handle all. Let the media and the fans handle that all. 
All we care about is the X's and O's. That's all we care about, the matchups and how we can expand on those and how we can take advantage of those. If they had and gotten, Doug will do that. He's that smart. If they had gotten too bought into the outside noise last year, they'd have fallen apart. No, you're right. And they, they don't want you're right. five games by the end of the year. I, I'll be honest with you. But until the Agnew return, I was sitting there going, what, have you guys been reading your press clippings? Yeah, what the yeah, heck's yeah. going on? You feel a little sloppy here, and you don't, you're do not you not used to Doug – Team being sloppy, and they were—they no, were a little bit not. off. Yeah. He was like, "Yeah, this isn't good." You know, I, I, you, you were in, in, uh, you could have lost that game. I mean, we took over, which was great. Ten minutes ago, we took over, but prior to that, that was, you know, play here or there. You never know what can happen. You can't let a team hang around. You can't let a team hang around. Trust me, Kansas City saying that to their team. Don't let these guys hang around because they'll come back. They've been doing it. The Jags will come back on your ass if you don't put them away when you have a chance. That's the message to them. Um, I know you, you've briefly touched on it a, a, a little bit, talking about Travis Etienne needs to have a big game. And, I think and he does. I think our running game has of, to be pretty spot on. In terms of Jaguar weapons, and honestly, we could probably do this all year on this podcast just because they got so many really good weapons you feel yep. great about. Yep. Who... Who do you kind of see maybe being the guy this week? Like it's a, like it's a Kirk game or it's an Ingram game or you, you know. I think Kirk's going to have a lot more opportunities. I, do too. I think when they play zone, it's it's hard to work on that that nickel corner. I agree because it's not man. I think this might be a quiet Ridley game because uh, Coach Campo was in here the other day yeah. um, on his podcast talking, yep. and I agree with him. He was like, "Look, I've coached against Spagnolo yeah. plenty of times. Right, I know right, him very Steve, well." Yeah, and he said. He said he will do everything in his power to take Calvin Ridley away. Yep. He's yep. he's like, it's going to be on everybody else to make plays. Yep. I, I think Ingram's going to have more opportunity. And you know what? He may not have a lot of opportunity, but Zay Jones will score another touchdown. That's just game. what he does, man. He's, he's really good. He just gets in the freaking end zone. What a it? weapon. I mean, what? You, you, you could sit there as a defensive coordinator, and he's moving up, but who? He, I got to stop a lot of guys. I can't double them all. I can't. Like, as opposed to what we're saying with the Jags defense, you can double Kelsey and not really – not. you still got to worry about him, but you're not, like, yeah, that right. worried. Right. Right? There's no Calvin Ridley. Look at Tyreek Hill last week for the Dolphins. Look what he did. Unbelievable. Like, that – how that they guy. let him out the door. Oh, they they got to be – oh, they got they, – well, they thought Sky Moore would be the replacement, right? Or Tony, maybe, which isn't happening at this current time, but – uh, it's going to be a hell of a game. There's no doubt about it. Let's go through the stats real quick because I love doing it. I do it every week, and uh, I'll do it quickly so we don't go on too far. But I always look at a few stats going into the game, and then I recap the game by looking at these same stats. Not that many. Points scored, points allowed, yards per carry, yards per attempt, plus what the completion percentage was at that yards per attempt. Wait till I tell you what Mahomes was at last week. Third down efficiency, fourth down efficiency, which is huge. Uh, the Colts went for it five times on fourth down against our Jags D last week. The sack, the interception, turnover ratio. By the way, they're both at zero for turnover ratio, so they're just they're even. Um, so you never want to be in the red. You want to be in the black on that one. Uh, points. Now, granted, you got to keep it in perspective. It's one game. But as we go on, these stats, to me, are very important, especially third and fourth down uh, efficiency. Do you get off the field and do you continue your drive? The Jags offense was terrible last week on third down and fourth down combined. They were 25%. Third, fourth down combined, they were uh yeah, they were 25%. That's not that's not good. They were three at twelve on third down. Offense. Bad. Very bad. Got to be cleaned up. You're not gonna you're not gonna win this game if you if you uh if they shut you down and make you punt. Uh, at least in my opinion. Defensively on third down, I wish I had like an, uh, a, a, a fireworks display because lowest ever, 16.67%. Our defense, it was like 2 of 12, I think. Phenomenal. That's what I'm talking about. Getting our offense the ball at least one more time during the game. So great job uh, by them. Yards per carry, a little misleading because we're at 3.0 because Tank got shut down basically. Uh, ETN was better. He was at a 4.3 yards per carry. Hasty 77 had a yards. Not hasty. Uh, Dearness Johnson, Johnson had a big loss. He lost yeah. like five yards. Yeah, he did. You know? He got hammered on that one. Uh, so that a little misleading there. Our defense uh, held him in check. I wasn't worried about the Colts running game. Uh, the Chiefs running game can get going. They can get physical on you. They can. And uh, the kid from LSU, uh, 
uh, the little guy that's Clyde uh, Edwards Hilaire. Clyde Edwards, thank you. Uh, what's his last name again? Edwards Hilaire. <coughs> He's right. got a He's double a good player. Yeah. You know, that's another thing the Jags have to be concerned of is that back out of the backfield, McKinnon or Hilaire out of the backfield. Or Pacheco. What's that? Or Pacheco. Oh, Pacheco. Oh, yeah. So that's. We're going to have to – look, our defense going to – they gave up 2.5 yards per carry last week against the Colts. We need a, a similar thing because Pacheco killed us last year. How did I forget about him? Jeez, he's a, he's an incredible On the player. Henny drive, he had that huge run. The run. Yeah, like the cutback run, yeah. run, yeah, where nobody was there on the back end. But He would have scored if Tyson Campbell didn't have track speed. No, you're right. You're right about that. So, And he uh, he's, a, he's, he's a very good player. Uh, for the Chiefs. I expect the Chiefs to try to pound the ball, but I expect our defense to be up to the task. Uh, the Chiefs' defense gives up three and a half yards of carry first game. I thought uh, Detroit should have pounded it more. I really think they had a chance to pound the ball quite a bit. Uh, they chose not to for whatever reason. Jameer Gibbs should have had the ball in his hands more. What's in my that? Jameer Gibbs should have had the ball in his well, hands without more. Without a doubt, he's, he's a nice player. Dude, every time he gets he's, the ball, good uh, things happen, bro. Yeah, he's ex- He's ex- electric. I mean, it was He's it was electric. insane. I was like, dude, give so this I think guy the we football. can run the ball on them. Uh, yards per attempt, their defense seven point two. It's sixty three percent completion percentage. So they give up some throws down the field a little bit. Trevor's at seven point five. It's seventy five percent. So I would expect some of those. You know, I'm a look. Uh, Man, we're going to see more Kirk zone. We're going to see more cross and routes, you know, just to confuse them. And maybe we'll see some deep ones as well. Got to give them time. Of course, uh, you can't let that Chiefs defense get to the quarterback. Now, our defense did really good against the pass. Uh, Our defense played really good against the Colts overall. I mean, the one thing I didn't like, they had 12 passing first downs and they scored um, well, they only scored 14, so you got to give them a lot of credit there, right? The other score was a defensive score. I thought our defense played pretty well last week. They got to play really well this week. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, 54% completion percentage against the Lions. 5.8 yards per attempt. They were getting after him. You got to try to disrupt him while keeping him in the pocket if you can. That's what you got to do against Patrick Mahomes, double Kelsey, and then be stout up front. Is that too much to ask? You know what I mean? Get after Mahomes, stout up front, double Kelsey. You're going to win the game on defense against that 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 vaunted. They can they can score now. And I think they can score. Tell me if you agree or disagree with this. I think between some somehow some way between Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker, I need three sacks. Yeah, can I get three? Yeah, well, look. I, is, three, is three too many to ask? I mean, if you uh, – no, it's not. However, did Hutchinson have a sack against Mahomes? I don't think he did. But he harassed him all day. He was giving him hell. So yeah. that's what I want. And sack's great. Of course, Josh Allen with three now if he's got more. Um, the uh, halftime beers of the game. Yeah, man. What's up, Chris? Great to have you on board. Chris for sales, Bell Bonds. Hey, if you get thrown in the clink, he gets you out in a blink. That's right, 822-2245. I made that up myself. 904-822-2245. But just harass them. That's what we need. I'd love the sacks because then we could say, look at all our sacks. It's great. But harass Patrick Mahomes. We've seen that in the past. Go back to when Ta- remember when Tampa's defense rattled the heck out of him. In the play, was it a playoff game? It was a or, Super Bowl. Was it Super Bowl? But they played him before the it, during the regular season as well down there and harassed him all game as well. You're right at the Super Bowl as well. You got to harass Patrick Mahomes I'm just and thinking, try to keep him contained as much as possible. I'm just thinking with Kelsey back and like you said, I agree with you. By the way, that I think it's going to be a super close game either way. I think so. If there's going to be five minutes left in the fourth quarter. And you're not going to be sure who's going to win. Yep. In my opinion. Yep. So because of that, because we're thinking, you know, two or three points may decide this football game, can I get, man, the Chiefs on the 40-something yard line and I get a devastating sack by Josh Allen that takes yeah. out a field goal range? Right, right. Can I get – because I think a play like that here or there can be the difference in the game. Daggers. You need daggers you know? in the sales. So that's where I, – I totally agree with you that if they're harassing Mahomes, that's a good that's, that's a, a good, good outing. Thing. Yep. But can I get one or two of those game-changing plays, plays, man, where where I can get him down in the back? It's impossible to get that guy down. Can I get him down, and can I kill their drive a couple of times? No, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Well, 
It's going to be a great game, and it's a benchmark game, and it will be a statement game if the Jags win. If the Chiefs win, it's not a statement game. They're just they're the Chiefs, and we a lot of the they're national too good p- for any statement the, game. The anymore. national pundits are going to pick the Chiefs. They will, most of them. I'm not. I'm picking the Jags, 28-27, and I expect an awesome game. And uh, you know, if that's not the case, well, we'll we'll talk about it next week, man. I hope you all have a great weekend. Happy Friday to you. Hey, if you're in the Fruit Cove area, come check out some live music. My my band, the Dad Bods, takes the stage at 7 o'clock at Iggy's Bar and Grill out on the patio. We'll play to about 11, so come on out. Well, 70s, 80s, 90s, rock and roll, baby. Uh, we do a little bit of everything. It's fun. A lot of fun. And uh, uh, a quick happy birthday to my youngest, Harley May who will turn 15 this week. And I can't believe my baby is 15 years old. She she don't look me eye to eye, but she's getting pretty darn close. I'll tell you that. But she's a great kid, and we're going to have a lot of fun. Bunch of uh, teenage girls in my house uh, Saturday night. I That's think nothing new for you. I might have, well, this is going to be a, an extension. I, I hear eight are sleeping over. I'm making a big breakfast, which I like to do the next morning. But I think during it, I might go shoot some pool. <laughs> you know what I mean? I might go down do and shoot thing. some pool somewhere and, and hang out after I make sure they're all taken care of. All right, that'll do it for me and Grammage here on Catching Up with Tommy Mac, brought to you by Team Tommy Mac. Hey, I post all about my sponsors, my clients, my friends, my colleagues out there. Make sure you check them out on their uh, respective websites and phone numbers that I throw out there. Great to have them on board. Stay safe, be cool, and we'll catch you right here on Catching Up with Tommy Mack. Peace.